So let's start our discussion about the different types of securities. We're gonna start with money market securities. Again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just uh, certain examples of these things. There are many, many different types of money market securities. Uh, money market securities are short term. They are highly liquid. They are large denomination and only the highest credit companies can participate. Uh, individuals do not directly participate in this market. They participate in this market indirectly using a money market mutual fund, which is one of the largest buyers of these securities. And so as we're going through this and you're thinking who buys this stuff because the prices are so high, it's money market mutual funds that buy them and then people buy shares in the money market mutual funds. And we'll talk about mutual funds uh, very soon. So we'll talk about different types. And again, this is not all the different types, but we're gonna start with different issuers. And the first are money market securities issued by the U.S. Treasury. And remember, the U.S. Treasury issues debt to pay for the current year's deficit and the accumulation of all the annual deficits, which is called the U.S. debt. And they determine what the structure of their borrowing is going to look like. They're going to borrow some very, very short term and some short term and some medium term and some long term. And these borrowings are broken up into essentially two different categories, Treasury bills, and then treasury notes and bonds. We'll talk about notes and bonds later. For now, we're gonna talk about very, very short-term borrowing by the US government, which are referred to as treasury bills. These are pure discount instruments. And what that means is that the investor pays, uh, is paid <coughs> face value on maturity. And so investors pay less than the face value, generally $10,000, and receive the $10,000 at maturity. The difference between what they pay and what they receive is the interest. And we'll talk about how this works. Uh, there's an example in the homework that I'll go through. Uh, four week, which are often referred to as one month, eight week, which are two months, 13 week, 26 week, and 52 week treasury uh, bills. And these, uh, here's the calendar. You can click this and you can see when these things are issued. So these are money market securities issued, issued by the US Treasury. Next, we'll move on to money market securities that are issued by very large banks. And these are not the same as the CDs or certificates of a deposit that you can get when you walk in. These are $100,000 and above, and they're referred to as uh, marketable meaning they are negotiable or can be traded. Marketable and negotiable are terms that are uh, used to describe something that can be traded. So if I go into a bank and I open up a $5,000 CD, I own that, I can't sell it to you. But if I open up a $100,000 CD, that can be traded or marketable, so that's much more liquid. Uh, as opposed to treasury bills, which are pure discount instruments where you pay less than 10 grand and get 10 grand at the end, these, you pay $100,000 and you get more than $100,000 at maturity. The next type of money market instrument, so we had US government, we have banks, and now we have corporations or commercial entities. And so this is referred to as commercial paper. And it's backed by the full faith and credit of the issuing company. They are issued by only by the largest and best credit rated firms. Why only these companies? Because people won't buy this paper unless a corporation is uh, has a very, very high credit rating. The only people who are interested in investing in money market securities uh, in this market, and remember that the way to think about this is, this is money market mutual funds that are buying these things, they only want the highest credit worthy entities. Commercial papers generally split into two categories, financial firms, which are large banks and investment banks, and non-financial firms. The difference between issuing a certificate of deposit and some financial uh, commercial paper uh, it is subtle, but it has to do with what the what the claim is and whether or not it's actually a deposit entity versus a uh, versus a non-deposit borrowing, uh, and that's not something that we have really have to worry about. Commercial paper uh, for both financial firms, which are large banks and investment banks, or non-financial firms, regular corporations, is under 270 days, so there's no need for SEC registration. Anything that's issued for longer than 270 days, you have to register it with the SEC. And so if you can issue stuff that's very, very short term, overnight or one week, uh, you don't have to register it, you can just do it every day. Again, interest is paid on top of the principal, and it is very common to roll this over. And so new paper is issued every single week to pay off the old paper. And so firms will go years issuing new paper every day, every week, instead of issuing longer term debt 
once. And why? Well, as we'll talk about in a minute, if I have an upward sloping yield curve, meaning if it's cheaper to borrow for a week than it is for five years, then borrowing every single week for a five-year period can lower my interest cost pretty dramatically. The next thing we'll talk about is something called asset-backed commercial paper. And the difference between commercial paper and asset-backed commercial paper is that asset-backed commercial paper is not backed by the full faith and credit of the issuing entity. This paper is backed by a specific asset, uh, like a highly liquid or highly rated financial asset, such as a AAA rated mortgage-backed security. And we talked about how asset-backed commercial paper was used in uh, financing housing during the uh, financial crisis uh, of uh, 20, 2008. We talked about that at the beginning of the semester.